then there will be a few sessions on small renal masses, large renal masses, and a little change in the schedule as shown on the screen. Module four will be the last module, which will be the upper urinary tract transitional cell carcinoma. So let us first start with hematuria. Hematuria is a very common neurological symptom and um, something which is extremely alarming for the patient. Um, it is truly, truly frightening. And um, <clears throat> hematuria can be uh, very mild to something which can be very, very severe. And uh, uh, it is defined as presence of blood in the urine. And uh, I thought that we should go through the definitions first so that uh, all of us know what we'll be talking about in the, in the case discussions. Hematuria is divided into, <clears throat> classified as visible hematuria and non-visible hematuria. Visible hematuria is also known as frank hematuria or gross hematuria. And it's been colorfully described as, as the color of various colors, the color of wine, vin rosé, which are, this is a light red, light red or a light pink color, port wine color, cola color, uh, tomato juice color. There may, may or may not be clots. But uh, visible hematuria or frank or gross hematuria can be extremely alarming to the patient and he seeks instant help. Non-visible hematuria is something which uh, comes up on testing and it may be either microscopic or dipstick uh, hematuria. This may, it may be symptomatic, uh, non-visible hematuria that is associated with lower urinary tract symptoms and it may be asymptomatic or asymptomatic non-visible hematuria. So non-visible hematuria that is microscopic or dipstick hematuria is uh, classically defined in our standard textbook of urology. Campbell's textbook is three or more RBCs per high power field. Though other guidelines of urological societies um, mention up to five or even 10 RBCs per uh, H power field as being normal. Uh, I will go into a little bit of theoretical discussion at this stage because these are uh, concepts uh, concepts which are uh, which should be clear in our mind uh, mind and um, all of you may be surprised that that uh, that a simple question on hematuria turns into an entirely different way in the course of an exam. So uh, recently, dipstick testing of the urine for both hematuria and for infection has become extremely advanced. Now, for the detection of um, hematuria, um, the, the chemical reaction is the, is the oxidation of orthotolidine by an organic peroxidase and uh, heme of hemoglobin um, catalyzes this oxidation, producing a blue-colored uh, blue, blue uh, compound. Now, there may be false positives and false negatives, but by and large, this is an extremely sensitive test. It can detect the presence of hemoglobin from one or two red blood cells. It is significant if um, on the dipstick test, it is one plus or more, and, <clears throat> and it detects hemolyzed or non-hemolyzed blood. Trace hematuria, as on the dipstick test, should be considered negative. Okay, it is also positive if there is myoglobinuria. So, uh, so dipstick hematuria is something which uh, has become extremely sensitive and almost as dependable as microscopic hematuria. Before interpreting dipstick hematuria, one should exclude transient uh, or non significant hematuria, which could be due to a ur urinary tract uh, infection. It could be exercise-induced hematuria, rarely myoglobinuria. It could be due to menstrual contamination. It could be associated with, the, with the sexual intercourse as well. So all transient causes of hematuria should be excluded before uh, you call hematuria significant. So what is significant hematuria? Any single episode of visible hematuria is significant as is any single episode of symptomatic 
non-visible hematuria in the absence of other transient causes, which I just mentioned, including UTI and persistent asymptomatic uh, non-visible hematuria, defined as two positive for non-visible hematuria in the absence of UTI and other transient causes. So the question arises, is microscopic or dipstick hematuria abnormal? Um, as you know, as I just mentioned, up to three RBCs per high power field is normal. And the upper limit of normal for RBC excretion in the urine is 1 million per 24 hours. Um, soldiers have been followed up for 12 years and 40% uh, of them had microscopic hematuria at least one occasion and 15% on two or more occasions. Uh, these were often associated with rigorous exercise, sexual intercourse, or menstrual contamination. So as many as 77% of patients with microscopic or dipstick hematuria have no abnormality, despite full conventional urological investigation, including cytology, cystoscopy, uh, renal ultrasonography and intravenous urography and CT scanning. Nevertheless, there is no way other than by further investigation of distinguishing the dipstick positive patient with significant disease from, uh, from the dipstick positive patient without disease. So all patients with dipstick hematuria have to be uh, investigated, even if the results are negative in more than three quarters of uh, situations. Now, um, um, before proceeding further, what should be the initial investigation for non-visible hematuria for symptomatic non-visible hematuria and persistent asymptomatic non-visible hematuria? One exclude all the transient causes, as I mentioned before. One should routinely check, calculate the uh, EGFR. One should routinely check for proteinuria, the urinary albumin creatinine ratios. And one should check the blood pressure. So, um, as uh, even as general surgeons, you know, the, in the investigation of him, this is an essential knowledge in surgical practice. So, when is urological assessment warranted or a urological referral? So, all patients with visible hematuria must be referred for urological investigations, as must be patients with symptomatic non visible hematuria as may be, uh, um, may be asymptomatic non-visible hematuria in patients of above the age of 40 or persistent asymptomatic non-visible uh, non hematuria as two of three positives for NBH. So what are the outcomes of such? Uh, now, NBH is quite common. It uh, it may be present at 20% of men over uh, 60 years old, but as I mentioned before, about 70 to 90% uh, have no urological pathology. Likewise, uh, many patients have, a, um, uh, have glomerular disease despite having non-visible hematuria, but a normal blood pressure, normal serum creatinine, and in the absence of proteinuria. But if proteinuria and hypertension are present in a patient with microscopic or dipstick hematuria, then these are impending signs of deteriorating renal function. So one must not forget this nephrological angle to the evaluation of hematuria. Now, what about cancer? Now, about 5 to 10% of patients with uh, microscopic hematuria will have cancer. And about 20 to 25 percent of patients with gross hematuria will have cancer. So these are important statistics. And we all know we I'm not going to go through individual causes of hematuria, but one must look at uh, look at congenital, congenital, traumatic, inflammatory, but infective causes of hematuria. And of course, the commonest causes are stones and cancer um, and similar things. Of course, BPH can also cause hematuria. Equally important are nephrological causes of hematuria, common in children and young adults with proteinuria, 
uh, and RBC casts. And one has to look at the various glomerular disorders which cause hematuria, as well as the coagulation disorders. So what are the essential urological investigations of hematuria? So um, uh, they are urine culture, urine cytology, renal ultrasonography, compute price tomography, the CT urography, and cystoscopy. So these are, uh, these are investigations um, which are mandatory for all patients with visible hematuria, symptomatic and asymptomatic non-visible hematuria, um, especially for the, those aged above 40 with, uh, with asymptomatic uh, non-visible hematuria and persistent um, uh, asymptomatic non-NVH in younger people. Diagnostic cystoscopy may be a flexible cystoscopy or cystoscopy under GAF radiologically positive findings. And um, uh, the CT urography has revolutionized the investigation of hematuria. It should be done with caution, ensuring normal renal function and um, making sure that, uh, the, that, uh, uh, that the 10-day rule is followed in women who are... Uh, in uh, ten day rule are followed in women who are not uh, uh, who are of childbearing age. Advantages are of rapid acquisition, high spatial resolution, multiplanar reformatting, single investigation. It has a higher radiation dose than an IVU. Has sensitivity and specificity. So uh, the other questions are that whether should cystoscopy be performed in all patients with asymptomatic uh, um, non-visible hematuria. So here some sort of risk categorization is important and patients with a positive smoking history, occupational exposure, analgesic abuse, and uh, you know pelvic irradiation and previous cyclophosphamide treatment should undergo cystoscopy. In asymptomatic patients, a co more cautious approach may be followed, uh, followed and cystoscopy may be deferred. But these are only patients with asymptomatic non-visible hematuria. So the yield of further investigations in patients with um, hematuria, visible or non-visible, when negative, uh, uh, is not, not very high. Nevertheless, uh, most guidelines recommend repeated urinalysis, urine cytology, and regular blood pressure measurements for up to three years with repeat imaging and cystoscopy where dipstick or microscopic hematuria persists. But diagnostic yield is very poor unless there is, um, unless the patient develops recurrent visible hematuria. So, uh, so, I, uh, so this was a little, uh, little presentation on hematuria. I thought it was important for general surgeons to be aware of, uh, um, uh, of, uh, um, uh, the issues involved in the evaluation of patients with hematuria and particularly non-visible hematuria.